you've seen this block diagram much earlier in a homework example. And back then you analyzed its output for a couple of inputs and you, you did that by feeding numbers around the blocks and it took a long time and it was prone to error. This time I'm going to tell you the general way to analyze it. You're going to analyze block diagrams, abbreviated as BD, by one, you're going to create a new variable that's at the output of every summer. You're going to make sure that the output of every summer has a variable. And then you're going to write your equations around each summer. And since you've got a variable on the output, that output will equal the sum of the inputs. And then you'll simplify, then it's just algebra. Then you'll simplify by eliminating, eliminating your intermediate equations. So let's do it for this one. Our first step is to create new variables at the output of every summer. So here's a summer. So we'll create a new variable at the output. And of course, I'm going to write them as if they're already been transferred in the z domain. So this x of n becomes x of z, and this y of n becomes y of z. And uh, that is at the output of the summer, so we don't need to write another one. So we've, we've done number one. So now to do two, we're going to write the equations around each summer. We've got two summers. We're going to have two equations. So the first equation um, around the top, top, summer. The equation is going to be the output, which is w of z, is going to equal the input, which is x of z plus stuff. Now, if you followed my first step, you'll always be able to easily determine what that stuff is. So this is z to the negative 1 times w of z. And that, that means that multiplied by 2, this would be 2 z to the minus 1 w of z. And this will be multiplied by a half. So this would be times 1 half z to the minus 1 w of z. And now the equations just sort of fall apart. You can see that the output is equal to the two inputs, x of z plus whatever's coming up this angle and up this angle. <laughs> It's the only one I didn't write it would be negative z to the minus 1 w of z. So I'll write that minus z to the negative 1 w of z. Now, this kind of feedback means that it's going to be very difficult to evaluate by hand, right? You'd have to do multiple loops but not so with z transforms. We'll do it at the bottom summer next, and we'll see that y of z is equal to the sum of the two parts feeding into it. So that's 1 half z to the negative 1 w of z plus 2 z to the negative 1 w of z. So we've done our second step, and now we're going to use just simple algebraic relationships to simplify them. So we want to get rid of w. And I see W in, in two different places. I'm going to somewhat arbitrarily choose my first to get rid of it. So I'm going to put the W, I'm going to move this W over here. And I'll use the distributor property to get it together, to get these two parts together. So this is omega from here plus R Z the negative one omega on the left. And all that equals x of z. OK, so this is great to find my input as a function of, of, of w. But I actually want to do the opposite, right? I want to get rid of w. So I, whenever I see a w, I'm just going to replace it by 1 over 1 plus z to the negative 1 times x. 
I've gotten a little sloppy about writing of z of z here, but it's there. Yeah, I can I can put it in of z and of z. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing out here. We'll say our output is equal to well, I see w of z in two places here, so I'll just add those together and I'll get five halves of z to the negative one times w of z. And we've got two nice equations here. And I'll substitute this in for our w to get rid of our w. And now we've got our full equation without the w, which is 5 over 2 z to the negative 1 all times 1 over 1 plus z to the negative 1 times x of z. Well, this is great. We, now that we've done, now that we've done this step, we can algebraic, sim, algebraically simplify this still a little further, right? We can say y of z is equal to. Actually, I can't do any better than that. That's just that's just perfect. We've got our co coefficient out here. We can see what its inverse transform is. Um, we have now figured out what its. We can now directly write what its uh, transform is. Its transfer function is, it's defined to be the output over the input in the frequency domain. And a number of you are still saying that if it's true in the frequency domain, the transfer function has to be y of n over x of n in the time domain. And that's absolutely not true. Remember, when we cross multiply this, we get the output is equal to the transfer function times the input in the frequency domain, that's in the time domain, convolution instead of multiplication. But now we can write this out. Dividing both sides by x of z gives us 5 over 2 z to the negative 1 times 1 over 1 plus z to the negative 1. And so if the question was find its transfer function, that's it. Maybe the question wasn't. Maybe the question was to find the impulse response of this block diagram. So that's not hard to do. That's just the inverse transform of H of Z. So if H of Z is equal to five halves Z to the negative one times one plus one over one plus z to the negative one. You know that in general, the formula for a to the n, u of n, is one over one minus a, z to the negative one. So if we can just ignore all this part for a second, we can say that our h of n would be equal to, let's see, a here would be equal to negative 1. So it's equal to negative 1 raised to the n u of n. But now we have to somehow account for the fact that it's actually multiplied by this 5 halves. So by linearity, that just means if you multiply by a constant, it's multiplied by a constant. And what does multiplying by z to the negative 1 do? it just delays everything by one. So every time we see a n, we replace it by an n minus one to take into account the z of the negative one. And now we found our impulse response. And that was really fast to do. And what was really amazing is that in the original uh, exercise, it took forever to find out just a couple of first few um, responses of our impulse response. And now we found our impulse response over all time. Let's make it Let's make the question more complicated than that, though. Let's say we want to find the output of this system at the lower left if the input is something nasty, like, uh, like that. Now what do you do? Well, you know you work it in the frequency domain. You know, in general, the output is equal to the 
uh, product in the frequency domain of the transfer function times the input. Of course, it'd be the convolution of the time domain. So we've already figured out what h of z is. It's equal to five over two, z to the negative one, times one over one plus z to the negative one. And we can almost read out what our transform is of this. The, the two just comes out and uh, this would transform to one over one minus one half z to the negative one, where this part corresponds to this and this part down here corresponds to our h of z. This is our h of z and this is our x of z. All right, so now what do we do with this thing? We're gonna have to multiply them together. So the twos cancel and we get five z to the negative one times this. And so now we're gonna use partial fraction decomposition. And so we are going to rewrite this as equal to the five z to the negative one times something over one plus z to the negative one plus something over the second product. And now we just need to find out what that something is and we'll find it using the cover up method. So what is the root of z to the negative one? Don't try to figure out what z is. You can, but it's you can if you want to. You can figure out what the uh, what the pole is here, right? Um, the pole here is equal to negative one, but instead figure out what the whole thing is here. That didn't come out nicely, but instead figure out what the this whole z to the negative one has to be. So you can just see without finding out what z is, without taking the reciprocal, you can see that this whole piece has to be equal to negative one. So cover that up with your finger. You're gonna ignore the, uh, the part out here. You can always just multiply that back later. And you're gonna plug this negative one in while putting your finger <laughs> over it. And that gives you what's left over, which is this piece which is one over one minus a negative one half. So one minus a negative one half is the same as three halves. One over three halves is two thirds. You can do the same thing over here. We're not gonna try to find what Z is. We're gonna try to find out what, when you multiply one half, would make this whole thing go down to zero. And so z to the negative one would have to be equal to two. And so now we'll cover up this part and we'll still cover up this part and we'll just look at the remaining part. We'll put in a two for z to the negative one and we'll get one over one uh, plus two. And so that's gonna be equal to one third. So now that we've done the partial fraction decomposition we can say, I'll just neatly write it. It's equal to this times, maybe I'll use the distributive property just to make it even clearer. We'll use, it's equal to this times two thirds, one plus z to the negative one, plus five z to the negative one times one third over one minus one half z to the negative one. And hopefully it's obvious that we can combine this two thirds with this five and rewrite that as equal to 10 thirds z to the negative one, all times one over one plus z to the negative one, and then plus five thirds z to the negative one, all times one over one minus one half z to the negative one, and now we can directly write what our y of n is. It's equal to, just from this, it would be equal to minus one raised to the n. We're gonna to have to do something that would be u of n. 
And now I have to do something with this. Well, linearity says we just multiply through by 10 thirds. And z to the negative one says every time we see an n, we'll add that negative one over there. So let's do the same thing on this side. Here, we've got, this is a direct transform of uh, one half to the n, u of n. We're multiplying it by 5 thirds. And we've got it multiplied by a z of the negative one. So every time we see an n, we subtract one from it. And now that is our whole answer. Yes, that took a little bit of time. But take a look at what we've done here. If we were to find, if we were to try to find by hand the output of this for the first, say, the fifth output of this at n equals five, in order to do this by hand, we'd have had to have found first n equals zero and the value for y of zero, y of one, y of two, y of three. I can guarantee you I'd have made a mistake, especially with an input that was as complicated as this. But now, not only could I tell you what the output is at n equals five, I could tell you what the output is at n equals 1,005 just as fast.